Hey Calvary, how you doing? My name is Pastor Sean. I have the honor of bringing you today's word for the day. Today's passage is Galatians 6, verse 9, and here's what it says. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Do you want to know what the most thankless, most tiring thing in the world is? To do good to others on your own power. It's very easy to get tired of doing good things when those good things produce nothing in return. Imagine you're helping a family member out and you've done everything for them. You buy them a car, you get them food, you make sure they're up to, for work on time. You give them solid Christian advice. You do all these good things for them, but then they don't change. They don't care about the car that you bought them. They don't eat healthy or eat enough. They're still late for work or worse, they get fired from their job constantly. They don't listen to a single piece of good Christian advice that you give them. And the good things that you seem to be doing for them are fruitless. Now, this isn't a talk about enabling bad behavior. This is about doing good to others. Because sometimes when we do good in any situation, it could come back fruitless, and that can be defeating or tiring or upsetting. But Paul assures us that we can live a life of doing good at every single opportunity and never get tired from it. Not just that we can, but that we are commanded to do good to others, especially fellow believers. So what's the secret? How can we live a life being able to do good to others without growing weary or defeated? And here it is. It's about getting rid of selfishness. It's about getting rid of selfishness and taking care of people as Jesus chose to take care of people. And maybe you understand where I'm going with this, or maybe you're asking yourself, how is doing good for those around me a selfish thing? This is how. If you're doing something for someone that would be considered good, but you're doing it out of hidden or external expectations, then you're doing good for yourself, not for the other person. When, do, when, when we do something for someone and expect them to change or, or worse, pay you back later for that good work, well, then what you're really saying is, I'm only going to do good for you if you do good for me or if you pay me back with something. Or if you say, let me see your life change or else no more good. Or you better do good back to me or I'm going to stop doing good things for you. That, on purpose or not, is selfishness. And that's when we become weary of doing good because it actually means the good things we're doing are from our power and our understanding of what good is, which our power and our understanding is a very shallow well. I know that sounds terrible and judgmental, but the truth is there's a better way and it's worth talking about. Philippians 2, 3 through 4 says that, says this, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility, value others above yourselves not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. Do good to others out of humility, not out of selfishness. Out of love and not out of expectation. Good acts done through humility is how we never grow weary of doing good. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now, if God knows who you are inside and out because he made you and he prepared these good works for you, then there's nothing that should stop you from doing these good works. Growing tired of them isn't a possibility because the good works that God gives us are fruitful in time and they're life-giving in that moment. I mean, you'll probably be tired after doing good works, but not tired of doing good works. There's a big difference there. Do you really think that God wants you to do good things and then become defeated by that, or upset by that, or tired of doing them. Absolutely not. The ability, the power, and the opportunity to do good things in this world comes from God and God alone. So if you're sitting there wondering, how do I humbly do good to others and stop growing tired out of my expectations and secret selfishness, here's what you get to do. Here's what you got to do. Remember what God has done for you through Jesus Christ on the cross. That's it, that's our power. Remembering, God gifted us the greatest good of all. He, God, died on a cross for you, delivering you from evil and bondage, the ultimate good work. And you know what he has? You know what expectations he has on you? Nothing. All he asks is that we have faith in him. That's it. For those who believe in their hearts and profess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord are saved into eternity with him. There's not a single act or work that can save ourselves, and there's nothing that can ever pay back Jesus for saving us and giving us this good work. He did it without expectation. And he gave to us first 
without expectation. And it's through this giving without expectation that true life change can come about. Not forced life change or life change to pay someone back because the change isn't of our power. It's of God's. And once we know the gospel truth, once we are transformed by it, Jesus desires us to follow his example and how we do good to others, to mirror him through remembering the gospel story that impacted your life. You are continually transformed and renewed in humility to do good works that God has placed before you. And through remembering Jesus and his gospel, we have the power to do good without selfishness, without expectation, and without growing tired. So who are you trying to do good for? But who do you keep getting upset with by their lack of life change or by their lack of reciprocating good back to you? How can you do good for them instead without expectation, without growing weary? It's out of humility, and it's out of remembering what Jesus has done for you. So do good, Calvary, but not from your own broken and shallow well. Do good through the power and memory of Jesus Christ and his beautiful gospel of grace and redemption. God bless you, Calvary. Have a good day.